As you read in chapter 5, memos and comments are the two kinds of writing areas in Atlas TI. Memos are standalone writing areas, whereas comments are annotations or additions to all the other components and don't have an independent existence. We combine the two components in this video so they can be closely compared, because there's always a choice of which writing area to use for any particular purpose. We'll then look at the actions specific to memos. As comments are not independent components, there are no actions specific to comments to discuss. We'll postpone discussion as usual on the actions common to all components, focusing here on the actions specific to memos, linking memos to other components, and converting memos into documents. Chapter 5 discusses the important issues surrounding the choice of whether to write something in a memo or a comment. And there's also a reference in the chapter to a blog post in which I discuss some helpful alternatives to the use of memos for analytic writing. But these are all strategy level issues, and in this video we're focusing on the tactics, an orientation to how memos and comments mechanically work. Memos and comments are completely different. Memos have their own manager, which I'll open here. Memos are standalone writing areas, analogous to individual Word files, but existing inside the Atlas TI project, rather than outside as a separate set of files. As with all other components, you first have to create a memo as a thing and give it a name before you can begin writing in it. Here's a memo called Summary of Call, the summary of a phone call I had with my co-researcher, and here is the writing area. It also shows the last time it was edited and the name of the user who edited it. The user who first created the memo is also available here in the author column, but we'll cover the user system as it applies to all components in the project as a whole video. A comment, in contrast, does not exist as a standalone piece of writing. So you could say technically a comment isn't really a component of the program at all, but from our point of view it functions for us as a component, so we think of comments in that way. Every component has a comment area that can be written in. If you see an icon for any component, whether here in the margin area, or in a network, or in a manager, I'll open the code manager. And if there is a comment indicator, a little yellow indicator with what looks like a couple of lines of text, then there is a comment. And wherever you see a comment, you can pop it up by double clicking or right clicking. Here is a comment on a code. And I can also see a comment and a code by double clicking in the margin area. So here's a code with a comment, and here is a quotation with a comment. And whenever you pop up a comment, you can always add some additional writing or change the writing that's there. So comments are writing in context, in the context of a particular component, in contrast to a memo, which is writing independent of any other component. Coming back to the memo manager, because you can write a comment as an annotation on any component, you can also write a comment on a memo, which I'll switch on now. I go to the View menu and switch on Comments. I had them switched off before so as not to confuse things. A comment on a memo is perhaps a bit odd. It's like writing a meta-memo, but like anything else, it might serve a useful purpose in translating an analytic task with very particular writing needs. Like other components, you can put memos into groups and filter on the groups, which was covered in the video on groups. I don't have any memo groups here. Memos also have a separate grouping mechanism called memo types. Here I have three types of memos, background memos, theory memos, and commentary memos. You can create new types. Perhaps I want to make this memo a new type called records of communication. And I might have several examples of those, and I want to be able to keep track of them. You can't do anything with memo types other than sort on them. So here I'll click on the column header, and they sort within their groups of types. Moving on to the actions that can be taken on memos. A memo can be linked to a quotation in exactly the same way as a code can be linked to a quotation, by dragging the memo onto the quotation. So I can take this memo and drag it onto this quotation, and now it is linked in the usual way. You could think of this memo linked to the quotation as like an external comment, whereas this comment on this quotation is irrevocably a part of the quotation, whereas this memo can be linked or unlinked from this quotation and linked or unlinked to other quotations. 
But a memo can also be linked to another memo or linked to a code if you find you have a purpose for doing this. You do it by simply dragging a memo on top of another memo and now it is linked as indicated in the density column. Similarly, you can drag a memo onto a code in the code manager. But these linkages are not the same as the named relations we saw in the earlier video on codes, where you can link a code to another code, or on the video on hyperlinked quotations, where you can link a quotation to another quotation, giving the linkage a name. And then these pairs of codes or pairs of quotations can be seen in the link manager that we saw earlier. Linking a memo to either a memo or to another code is not a named relation. It's just a linkage, which you can see in a network. These links are passive links that don't do anything other than show up in the network. The final specific action is to turn a memo into a document. If you decide you have been writing text or pasting in text to a memo, and now you want to change its status to become a codable document, you simply right-click on the memo, and you say convert to document, and it becomes a new document. Note that the new document and the original memo remain independent. So if you update or change the document, it doesn't change the memo and vice versa. This completes the orientation to memos and comments. We now invite you to read about another component in chapter five and then watch its component orientation video.